That's it, Gaudi View, live on Dead Cut. I'm your host, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. The women's pet and the men's regret, where what you see is what you get, and what you don't is better yet, John R. Highness. And of course, the latest and greatest in Hudson County news. So, as I've said for weeks now, we're talking about the phenomenon known as the Peninsula City, and uh, there's just so many things happening there in this election year, and while it's still 10 months away, we can't make it more than three or four days, it seems, without another blockbuster story coming uh, through my email or on our desks. So this week, what we were talking about is the assistant business administrator, the former assistant business administrator, actually left uh, City Hall back in January, but remained paid through April. We don't have a definitive clear-cut reason as to why right now, but we're going to tell you what details we do have regarding that departure. We're also going to be speaking about Chief Municipal Prosecutor, of course that's a Jersey City, Jake Hudnut, and his race against James Solomon and Ward E. And we're going to tell you what happened at his birthday party last night, a fundraiser, and we fired the first real shots, I believe, of the campaign from the challenger's point of view. So I'm going to sh tell you about what happened there. We're also going to be talking uh, on, on a somber note, uh, we're going to be talking about former Bayonne Board of Education trustee Ava Finnerty. She passed away over the 4th of July weekend, 72 years old, over four decades of service, three of which were in the Peninsula City. So, you know, certainly our thoughts and prayers to her family, the school district, and uh, really the city as a whole. Obviously, that's a sad one. And also, we have a, a very unusual story that uh, isn't political at all, where a pet owner was actually gave his dog to care to a pet sitter and he did that over the holiday weekend and then as it turned out the pet sitter said she lost the dog and then the dog ended up at a vet's office said was dead so this is a very unusual again set of circumstances but we're going to tell you what we do have with this sad story of Mac the dog and today I'm going to be joined remotely by Hudson County Democratic Organization Chair Amy DeGees but for now we're going to take a break we'll be right back. Cutting edge surgical care is right here in Secaucus. Robotic surgery is safer. Shorter hospital stays. Smaller abdominal incisions. The size of an M&M. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City, Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hudson County View, live on Uncut, John R. Heides. So before I speak with Madam Chair today, who's also a Jersey City Council, the large candidate, let's talk about what happened in the Peninsula City. So, like I said, one uh, pretty hot political story and one, uh, I mean, really nothing to call it, but a, uh, a, tr a tragic situation, an unfortunate situation, of course. Uh, we saw one of the Board of Education trustees, Ava Affinity, pass away. So, as HCV first uh, reported on uh, July 5th, Affinity passed away after a long bout with cancer, she was 72 years old, and uh, according to her obit obituary, of course, prepared by the family, she had 44 years of service as an educator before retiring, and over 30 of those years were spent in Bayonne. So, you know, that in and of itself is a pretty remarkable achievement, I believe. And she was elected in 2015, and that was a very significant Board of Education election because that was the first time in three and a half decades that the, the Peninsula City voters were selecting their Board of Education trustees. It had been an appointed board for quite some time. There was a referendum in 2014, and the voters overwhelmingly wanted to go back to selecting their school board trustees. And so that's exactly what happened. And she wanted uh, what was a mixed uh, election. And 
Then she ran again in 2018 and was successful a uh, second time. And this was also a little bit of an interesting twist uh, where she was up against uh, you know, a very large field, over a dozen candidates. But when it came down to it, she won third place by less than 100 votes. There was a recount. But when it was all said and done, she ended up maintaining her seat despite a very spirited challenge by Leo Smith. And he was a former school business administrator in Bayonne. So, you know, with that, uh, you know, there's been quite a few uh, tributes, of course, out of the school district and the city. I mean, we heard from Mayor Jimmy Davis. And, of course, we heard from Superintendent of Schools, John J. Neese. So uh, we're going to just read you a quick statement from him. It's, he said, It is with heavy hearts that we inform you that trustee Ava Finity passed away. After a long career at the district, she went on to become a dedicated and respected member of the BOE. Our thoughts and prayers go out to her family and friends. And also, the Board of Education announced this week that they would be flying the flags half staff in her honor so certainly a uh, a classy thing to do and i'm sure family and friends could appreciate that as i said at the top of the program you know uh, heartfelt condolences on everyone that felt the impact of the loss which it sounds like it was many many people in bayo and perhaps even beyond so with that uh I'm also going to talk about what happened as far as this assistant business administrator. So now, again, we've been talking months at a time here about how Bayonne has just been just a hotbed for political activity. You know, we saw at the beginning of the year, uh, Mayor Jimmy Davis and Assemblyman Nick Travelotti had a falling out. Travelotti, who is also the Assembly Majority Whip, was kicked off the line in favor of William Sampson IV, and he's going to be the Assemblyman, barring an unbelievable mishap during the general election. But, you know, given the way that uh, the Democrats easily win on the line, that seems highly unlikely of, of any chance of a Republican upset. So. There was that, and you know, we saw the lawsuit filed by Melissa Matthews in April, the business administrator. She's been on this program just about a month ago, and ever since then, it has just really been, uh, well, a you-know-what show, as most people say to me. So anyway, so let's get to the particulars. Now, this is about uh, Mark Bonomo was his name, is his name, and he was the former Bay assistant business administrator. He was hired in October 2019, and... It, his last day was January 15th of 2020, and we see that through cited sheets from the city of Bayonne, of course, a public record. And yet, for whatever, what for now remains an inexplicable reason, he was on payroll until the beginning of April. That was April 5th. So we uh, saw that business administrator Melissa Matthews said back in uh, March that I am signing this under duress and will not sign payroll for him next pay period unless provided with a legal basis to do so. So obviously that's uh, not something you want to hear from any administrative uh, worker at any municipal government level. And Donna Russo, assistant counsel for the city, responding by stating she was unable to address sensitive and confidential personnel information in city business since two individuals from outside the city were carbon copied on her email. So those two individuals were attorneys representing Matthews. And again, she has that gender discrimination suit against the city, but this was just a, a couple weeks before she filed. Um, and her reply on March 15th was, as he has not been in City Hall and is not working, yet is getting paid, I have questions about the legality of what is taking place. I have been told by payroll and personnel that in the event of an employee leaving, that employee must prorate their days for the year based on their departure date. Seems to be, you know, standard procedure as far as municipal government goes. But uh, things got a little messy now. I also had a chance to look at some prior emails, and Russo had previously told Matthews that Bonomo had resigned. This was on January 25th. And on that same day, Council President Sharon Nadrowski was also included on the email from Russo, asked Mayor Jimmy Davis when Bonomo's last day would be. And, he, and this is an email coming from the mayor's office. You would assume it was Davis, but his effective date of resignation is 4 5 He is off payroll on 4 6 So unclear as to why that's the case. And the next day, January 26th, Russo questioned why Matthews was still pressing the issue regarding Bonomo's employment with the city. As I advised you yesterday, Bonomo is history. He offered his resignation. The mayor accepted it. We have a done deal. Is there a reason why you are researching his time charges and checking cited sheets? So I don't know where this one is going, but 
You know, clearly he hasn't been with the city in months, but this is all going to continue to come to light as that gender discrimination uh, lawsuit plays through the courts. And we know that a judge is going to hear on whether or not Panamo and the OEM coordinator, that's uh, Ed Junior Ferrante, are going to be dismissed. That's going to be heard on July 23rd. So obviously we hope to be the first one to let you know what the judge decides on that. And we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. At the Regional Hospital, we promise to be prepared for your emergency. We promise to provide world-class robotic surgical care. We promise to treat you like family. To provide accurate diagnostic care. To provide the most innovative orthopedic care at your doorsteps. We promise to treat your baby like our own. To never stop investing in the best of spinal care. To be with you every step of the way. Here at Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to take care of our community. new truck isn't just a brand new truck when it's tough enough to have best-in-class available payload and smart enough to know that a cab can also be an office a truck equipped with best-in-class available towing that asks why can't all that power power more than just this truck no your brand new truck isn't just a brand new truck when it's the all-new f-150 tough this smart can only be called f-150 Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Heides. So let's talk about uh, Mac, who was a mini, uh, I believe that's a, po a poodle, and uh, a mini golden poodle, sorry. So this is a story that's received a whole bunch of attention this week. I mean, we've, we've seen groups from Hoboken, Jersey City, Bayonne, all trying to find this dog. Uh, I believe the owner lived in the Jersey City Heights area, uh, right in my neighborhood, actually. And we've seen this story picked up by ABC, by PIX11, and of course, the local media as well, myself, Daily Voice, Patch. You know, this is a story that is just, again, as I said at the top of the program, so unusual and really just, just so disappointing and unfortunate, if I, if I could just say so myself. So let me just read you the Facebook post uh, that gave us this sad news. At around 6.30 p.m., we received a phone call that Mac had been brought into the vet. After rushing down to the vet, we were informed that Mac had unfortunately passed away. This is from Diego Chavez, and it's a Facebook post that is now went viral. Um, it was actually posted on Monday, but since his profile is mostly private, people didn't really start to come across it until he made it public, and then it went viral, and you know, here we are today. So please do not take this as a sign to harass or threaten the sitter. For now, we just ask for time to board over the loss of our Mac. Once again, I cannot thank everyone enough for all the help and support we've received, and we are sorry that we cannot update with good news. So, with that said, uh, he shared quite a few things on his profile, one of which was an email shared by Chavez. So, Mac had been left with the, by Chavez, excuse me. Mac had been left with pet, posh pet service over the weekend, and she claimed that the dog unexpectedly jumped out of her car while she was dropping off another person's pet. She said yesterday when I opened, my car door to drop off a dog on the way back to my apartment. Mac got out of the car and he ran away. I looked all day everywhere. I thought he would be or go. The parks, dog parks, everywhere nearby and everything, but I couldn't find him. I am so sorry. I feel terrible. Now, the Posh Pet Service is based out of Cliff Cliffside Park, according to their Facebook page, though their listed phone number does not work. The reviews are overwhelmingly negative and accuses the owner of stealing Peck. Pets. So just look at these two uh, reviews from Gita Eek and Keely Ficao, respectively. Steals and abuses dogs, that's all caps, and with several exclamation points, disgusting human beings work for this service that belong in jail, that was capitalized as well. Do not use not reliable, all caps, many exclamation points, steals dogs. There was a special place in hell for her. She killed a dog and she should rot in prison. Um, so certainly people have a very strong opinion about this uh, service and it's not a very positive one, as you can clearly see. AB7 reports that police are investigating the incident, uh, did not specify which department or departments, so we're working on trying to gather more information. I know a lot of people asked who's investigating, a lot of people are asking 
who brought the dog to the vet, which vet. You know, I know there's some things that are unclear. Unfortunately, uh, given that this is a law enforcement investigation, a lot of those things are probably going to take a little bit of time. But with that, if you are interested in paying your respect to Mac, what you can do is go to the candlelight visual in the Mile Square City at Church Square Park tomorrow at 7 p.m. So with that, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. issues from their most local representative. Uh, he has stood in the way of finding new ways to uh, build schools. Uh, he hasn't offered anything meaningful on police reform, uh, next to nothing on green issues, even though uh, he might have made mention of that four years ago. Uh, and so people just want to see solutions. And they've seen more of that out of the municipal prosecutor's office, because that's where I was. And so now I think uh, we need a wardy councilman who does that. And of course, a focal point of your speech just now was about not defunding the police, but but uh, I guess basically reforming the police. So what do you think about that? Or what do you think about what the JCPD should look like in the next four years, four and a half years? What are some ideas you have on how we could take a step in the right direction? We really, really, really need to push the new leadership of the JCPD to have a stronger commitment to foot patrol. Uh, not park and walks, because that's not long enough, but an actual beat unit or a patrol, foot patrol unit. 
unit that actually goes out and solves quality of life small issues. Uh, I've had three quality of life officers in the municipal prosecutor's office. It was a bit of a trial. It's been really successful. And now we need to roll those principles out uh, among an entire unit citywide. Uh, I also think that we need to better train our police officers in physical combat so that they don't resort to uh, lethal force or uh, unjustified force. Um, it costs money to train our police officers. It takes them out of patrol for the day. But police departments across this country just don't spend enough time on training their officers once they become officers. And so I think we could really lead the standard nationally in saying, hey, there's no problem with investing in better training. Yeah, you know, when the voters get to the booth in November, they're looking at the ballot in Ward E, James Solomon, Jake Hunter. What's the key difference there? The key difference is who talks the talk and who walks the walk. And I've been doing it. Look, him and I were in this election four years ago. He won, but since then I've been walking the walk, and he's still just talking it. So that's what this election is going to be about. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, Chad Arhitis. So that was, of course, Jersey City Chief Municipal Prosecutor Jake Hudnut, who's running for the Wardy uh, Council seat, which is the downtown seat. And that was uh, 626 in Jersey City last night. And you could see uh, the host of the party was... Hudson County Democratic Organization Chair Amy DeGees, who we are hoping we could squeeze in for one last segment. Uh, it's really uh, quite a bit of traffic out there, and uh, it, as you can see, it's raining pretty hard, so I don't know what's going to happen, but we have our fingers crossed. As far as the here and now, uh, you know, you notice that uh, Madam Chair said, so do not be fooled by individuals who continue to perpetually point out problems that they cannot fix and look towards a person who was dedicated towards fixing them. Now, of course, you would expect her to have nice things to say about her running mate. Amy is also running for council at large on the team full of slate. But uh, this is kind of a long time coming. Solomon has not been shy about going against the machine. We saw last year he endorsed three off the line candidates, including Hector Asagara against longtime U.S. Rep Albio Siri. Certainly that didn't sit well with the HCDO. Then this year we saw him help out a lot of progressive candidates running for Democratic County Committee, and they won at least 14 of those seats, so they did fare pretty well there, but there's been some friction building for quite some time, so it's not surprising to see the head of the party's not exactly thrilled with him. Now, with that, you saw uh, the prosecutor have some choice words for Solomon, which, uh, as I noted, I think that's the first time throughout this campaign that he's really put the gloves on and started swinging hard, and I think we could expect to see a lot more of that from both camps as we get closer to November 2nd. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, he had, just look at this, James Solomon says I'm a machine, guess what, I work for a living, James Solomon doesn't have to work for a living. So while I'm working 10 hours a day, James is home, writing out his next Twitter post, I'm going to win this race one vote at a time. And if I'm a machine, James Solomon, I'm gonna run you over. So, you know, clearly a guy who seems confident and uh, a guy, again, who's ready to stand and trade, Solomon on this one, though, decided he was going to take the high road. He said, I'm confident the voters of downtown Jersey City will choose the candidate of political independence and progressive values to represent them on November 2nd. So, you know, this is one of the premier matchups for the municipal elections this fall. Uh, look forward to hopefully hosting a debate between these two. And I think uh, we have a pretty spirited contest, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. So I'm sure many of you are as well. With that, we're going to take one more break. We'll, we'll be right back. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. 
Stevens Jersey City 4, 201 432 7272. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John Arhitis. So, yeah, given that we only have about five minutes, uh, give or take, left, you know, we're going to finish this one solo, and, you know, we'll have Adam Chair on another day, no hard feelings, you know, certainly uh, you never know what you're going to get out there when the weather gets bad. So, we're going to close on two completely separate notes, one regarding Hudson County Correctional Facility and another regarding the city of Hoboken. So, there's a new lawsuit that was filed at the end of the day on uh, Monday, which basically means it was filed on Tuesday since that was the observance of Independence Day. And this was filed by Helen Ford. She's a black female lieutenant and is actually the most senior member of the Hudson County Department of Corrections. And the lawsuit is against the county of Hudson, as well as her boss, Rod Edwards, who of course is the head of corrections here in Hudson. So the lawsuit makes a lot of allegations related to age and race discrimination, but there's also one particular excerpt that talks about cruel and unusual punishment being used against a prisoner at the direction of Director Edwards. So let me uh, talk about that excerpt for a moment here. On or about February 7, 2020, plaintiff encountered a situation in the jail involving a group of inmates being returned for visits with their families. One inmate, Jonathan Hickson, was verbally abusive to defendant Edwards while he was walking past him. Again, this is according to the lawsuit that was formally filed at Hudson County Superior Court on Tuesday. Defendant Edwards ordered that Hickson be placed in the restraint chair as a punishment. It is unconstitutional to place an inmate in the restraint chair for punishment. It is deemed cruel and unusual punishment. This is common knowledge among the Hudson County Department of Correction officers and is covered in training. The restraint chair is only to be used on a temporary basis when an inmate is actively a threat to himself or others. As a result of the alleged incident, Ford says in the suit that she verbally objected to the situation and later sent an email about it, which he claims has been since deleted from the server. Obviously some bold allegations being made in this court filing. After speaking up about the situation, Ford asserts that they was victim to further retaliation from Edwards. For example, she was in charge of training and compliance in February 2020, but her responsibility for inspections with outside agencies like U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and the U.S. Marshals was given to someone she describes as a white male lieutenant. She said she was moved to several various offices. She says also that she was stripped of her duties to hold the keys to the gun lockers at the jail and eventually had her title replaced to be a glorified clerk. Uh, at least that's the way the lawsuit lays it all out. Now, in September 2020, when she got the clerical job, which was a specifically trading officer, it's opposed to uh, her old title, and she was now subject of an internal affairs investigation. So, you know, certainly there's a lot going on here. As far as the county's perspective, a spokesman declined to comment on pending litigation. So we'll see what happens as this thing goes through the uh, criminal justice system. And, you know, we're just in the infancy, just filed the other day. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We're going to close on this. Uh, certainly, we've been talking about COVID-19 since March 2020, like every other news agency in the country, right? And uh, looks like we're very close to the numbers that the governor, that the State Department of Health, and countless other officials have wanted in terms of vaccinations. And we heard from Mayor Robbie Bollett via a Nixon alert yesterday afternoon, and he said that actually 66% of Hoboken residents have received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. He said, I'm encouraged to share that according to the state of New Jersey, we've made progress over the past month in our vaccination rates. For those 18 years and older, 75% have received at least a first dose, while 68% are fully vaccinated. And across residents of any age, 66% have received a first dose, while 60% are fully vaccinated. And while there is a margin of error, the state is reporting that nearly 100% of our seniors, 65 and up, have received at least a first dose, while 94% are fully vaccinated. Needless to say, Hoboken is doing its part thanks to everyone who has made the effort to get vaccinated in beating back the pandemic in our region. He also encourages anyone with children ages 12 and up that are in the public schools to do the vaccinations, uh, suggesting the Pfizer, you know, which is two doses, over the summer before the fall semester convenes in September. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it a week. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.